When most people think of the start of a new school year, they think of buses, something that was on the mind of everyone in Boston in 1974, when the city started the process of desegregating schools through a hotly contested busing program. This week, we're looking at a special broadcast of WGBH's An Evening Compass, which aired three nights before the first day of school in 1974, and features interviews with parents and footage from a violent protest at Boston City Hall Plaza. Welcome to The Rewind, where each week we explore the public media archives where history is preserved online and in the vault. This week, we're looking at a clip from a time that is painful for many Bostonians to remember. So we want to know, what challenging historical events do you want to learn more about? Let us know in the comments below or with the hashtag WGBH Rewind. So not only does this week's clip feature reports from Boston's court-ordered desegregation, it also features a public service from WGBH. In the clip, you'll hear phones ringing in the background, which are operators helping local parents know where their children will be attending school and how they'll get there. Let's look at the clip. Still confused about busing in Boston? Stay tuned for Compass Team's special on the entire desegregation story, next. Sorry. Good evening, I'm Ed Baumeister. This is the week, and this next 90 minutes is designed to give you information about what happens this week when Boston schools open under a federal desegregation order. Those who have watched the other demonstrations and insist that this demonstration, the people seem angrier than they were in the others. Yes, definitely. I've been on all of them for the past nine years, and we started small and we've gotten big. And I think they are angry because we have been ignored, and school starts Thursday, and their backs are up against the wall. And this is the, I think, a very peaceful way of showing that all our marches have been peaceful. We have never had any trouble on any of the marches. He knew he was in hostile territory, but never before had a Kennedy been met with such a reception in Boston. He was booed. The crowd would not calm down. They shouted at him. Some said, kill him. Even the speakers could not calm the crowd. The audience made the gesture of turning their backs on Kennedy. His attempt to speak failing, he left the platform. The crowd sur surged towards this one's favorite son. It was a strange crowd to surround a Kennedy. As he walked towards the federal building, Tomatoes and newspapers started flying, and the nonviolence stopped. directors of Boston's television stations all say they are going to try to make sure that their coverage of integration this week doesn't become part of the story. All say they are conscious that the presence of newsreel cameras sometimes inspires action as well as records it. Mel Bernstein of WNAC-TV puts it this way, we don't want our cameras to be part of the story, but we have to cover the story. That sums up the dilemma. The electronic press learned in the 60s that it could find itself being used by demonstrating groups. Things happened in front of TV newsreel cameras that wouldn't have happened had there been no cameras. Still, as WBZ TV news director Bill Wheatley puts it, it's a very difficult thing. We're going to try to be as unobtrusive and remote as possible. We are trying not to become a factor. There's always more local history to be discovered in the archives. If you found this week's episode of The Rewind interesting, just head on over to openvault.wgbh.org. And as always, let us know what you find in the comments below or with the hashtag WGBH Rewind. Thanks again for unwinding with The Rewind, and we'll see you next week in the archives. Audio